Hear that roar of thunder Hear those tires scream Is every boy's hero Every lady's dream Flying down the highway heading west In a streak of black light Called the Bennett Express Look out the Bennett's coming Tires screaming, engine humming Looks like the Bennett's on the move Morning guys, Brad here back traversing Highway 31 with, um, <clears throat> as you can see, she a bit wet. I've um, done the first drop, we've just finished the second drop here, too wet to have the camera out and um, film. Just want to get shit done and get back in the dry cab, <laughs> so, oh, should have left that. 12.30, alright. Another cream 
almost a cream run today. We just got the first two drops and back out to Yass for some uh, fertilizer for Bunnings. So. This one's probably not going to be a very long one as well. Obviously, when you haven't got, helps take the brakes off. When you haven't got a lot of drops to do, there's not a lot of time for content and Although I do, I'm going to try not to sit here and ramble and talk for an hour, so. Um, I suppose just an update on the uh, the crash last week. Um, I mentioned in there that rumour was there was a head-on, it wasn't. Um, apparently there is dash cam footage out there of the incident. I haven't looked, I don't really want to see it. Uh, saw enough <laughs> of the aftermath but um, yeah long story short apparently there was a B double with uh, hay turning into a uh, into a property there um, he was on the UHF letting people coming down off aeroplane hill that he was turning and for whatever reason and there's a hundred reasons why UHF might be turned down or off. Uh, just getting off the phone with someone or something like that. He didn't hear it and um, yeah, bang. So that's um, just to clear that up. Again, it's coroner and all that sort of stuff's involved. So I'm not going to say any more about it. It all come out. But, uh, yeah. A feel for the uh, feel for the driver in the uh, the lead double that was um, done everything he should have. There's no there's nowhere to get off the road there. He couldn't pull over and let other trucks or let traffic clear before turning. In saying that, too, I'm sure he didn't just slam the brakes on and try and turn in there with uh, trucks coming on. But anyway, welcome back to the channel. <laughs> If this is the first time you're watching, thank you, thanks for watching, um, would really appreciate it. if you hit the like and all that mumbo jumbo that everyone else spurts about, and uh, subscribe to the channel as well, and if you really like it and want to support the channel, there's uh, membership options under the join tab, but here we are, we're back in rainy, rainy Canberra, um, normally when a drought breaks, it breaks big time, like, um, neighbour was saying, they had 30 mil overnight, which uh, isn't a lot, which is good because we had um, we had about four or five mil on Easter Monday night at the end of the Easter long weekend. That's the last time we've had rain at home, and um, it's supposed to be going to Queensland for four weeks in uh, at the start of July, but that's been pulled back to a week just because the old man's still feeding cattle and can't can't leave the property for that long with uh, livestock because there's just there's no grass it's that bare uh, the paddocks are just dust bowls it's um they're looking looking a lot like the paddocks look like sort of uh, February start of March when you're at the end of summer well we had our summer and then just kept on going and even yesterday it was back to 21 degrees even overnight it's only dropping to uh, 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 during the day it's only getting up to, to uh, 20 degrees stuff like that but um yeah hello and welcome to the weather channel i'm brad i'm your forecaster for this morning uh and let's talk more about weather shall we <laughs> uh, oh orange light orange light so anyway bring it back to trucking it was uh it's pretty much rained all night it was raining heavily when I uh, got to work and they parked the truck down the street again so I got a wet ass getting to the truck and then it rained pretty much heavy heavy to light the whole way up uh, the first drop was a little bit drier but um, it's coming back in there now and you might be able to hear it on the windscreen but probably like this all the way back out to the Barton but we'll, uh, what time is it? Quarter past seven. Because it's wet, 
we might go uh, the Majura Parkway up to the Federal and back, just less chance of accidents. Because, uh, yeah, people forget that they shouldn't drive the same in the wet as they do in the dry. But anyway, we'll, uh, we'll crack on and uh, get some K's under us. As we get out of Canberra, uh, I suppose there's a few drivers watching. Um, let me know what your car. I know, John, I've talked to you a couple of times coming into Canberra with your uh, walking flooring. I thought you'd go to Hume where the uh, waste, waste centres are there, but you get off a, um, a bit earlier. So let me know what your car. This is the first job I've had to cart general. And it's a bit of pain in the ass sometimes. Then the old man drives stock trucks. And, yeah, dealing with cattle every day, not the best. Especially the further you get north, they get a bit wild up there, but there's some wild ones down here as well. But, it's good, I'm happy with the comments. People asking questions, people saying hi. Uh, old mate that messaged me, from last week to see me on Wednesday. Um, I've had the fascia off. I've had the UHF out. I can't find anything wrong there. It was plugged in. So I've got a couple of um, a couple of GME TX 4500s at home. I'm going to bring one of them in and plug in and just have a go with that. And see if the older unit works. If it does, then I know it's an uh, aerial issue. But not, it doesn't. Continue not being able to talk on the IHF, which is the pain, pain in the butt. But uh, that'll do us. This rain's getting a bit heavier, better concentrate here as we get out of the uh, outer suburbs of Canberra. Um, next stop, yes.
the water running. <laughs> <laughs> I bet it is. Oh, look at the water. I reckon we probably just got two inches. It was really coming down. But, um, aquaplane there, if else. I'd been meaning to ask any of the other European drivers out there that don't have a, um, that, or that have fly-by-wire steer and if you have a blowout on the steer, does it yank the wheel and want to pull you off uh, into the bush? Hitting some of them uh, holes with water in it. The truck wanted to do it, but there was no no reefing through the steering wheel like you would on a <coughs> Kenworth or uh, or any older truck that had got an actual shaft and a steering box and everything else all connected. But yeah, very, 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 very wet. Oh. Luckily, it's eased off here, so I won't get a complete wet ass. But go in, grab the paperwork, and uh, I'll be back in a minute. Uh, rightio, so we got four, 14? 12. Eight foot Unger and four for Aubrey. Which luckily means I don't have to go to Aubrey <laughs> for Sarbo. Especially when I'm um, ahead of schedule. So that wasn't a minute. I um, it's something I try not to do. I know a lot of other YouTubers do it too. When you're filming, obviously, yeah, you're going to be a minute. You're going to be gone or whatever. But there's no need to tell you that because you're going to be back in a couple of seconds. Bait one. Um, <laughs> so yeah, the I'll catch you guys in a while. I'll see you later. Uh, unless it's the very end of the episode. Shouldn't be, shouldn't be doing that, but it's a habit. It's the same with the ums and ahs and all the other, all the other things. The uh, the pauses, the repeating yourselves, the talking crap. So, oh. so what are we doing? 14k now. There must be a certain speed you get to when it starts beeping at you, angry that your seatbelt's not on. So luckily, I've got room up the front front half of the trailer, I've only got three pellets on the very back from the first drop so I'm uh, pretty light at the moment which didn't help in the wet either but we'll uh, get the jacket on get out in the crap there you see and uh, we'll get some pellets on see you in two seconds
There we go, there we go. Oh, get out there, coat. Not a bad coat, that one. Seems to keep the water out. Again, there's uh, fellow truckies out there watching and probably other people that work out in the elements. What are you using to keep dry when she's wet? I've, um... Normally I bought off, off eBay this, uh... This bloody big long... Goes almost down to my ankles. Uh... <laughs> I'll describe it as a Japanese schoolgirl coat. It's, um... Well, only because it's got a clear, clear hoodie on it. But, um... It wasn't too bad, and then once once you go to get back in the truck, just give it a shake off and throw it in the toolbox. Because um, normally this year, when it's been raining, it's been raining up here, but not at home. So once I get home, I can just take it out and let it hang in the shed at, the, uh, at work for the night. Um, Um, and that way it doesn't get mouldy but um, that's the problem I also picked up went into one of the workwear joints and grabbed a um, a two piece rain coverall sort of rain waterproof waterproof pants and waterproof jacket slash jumper but <clears throat> same thing it's sort of it's all good and fair having the uh the gear on to stay waterproof what do you do if it once you get back in the truck because unfortunately these kenworth seats <laughs> most seats i've been in they're fabric so you get them wet and those seats are going to soak up the water and um and it's hard, especially in these trucks, as soon as I turn the heater on, she just all goes to mist, fogs up, you can't see shit. And last thing I do is have the heater on 30 degrees flat out, just so I can see out of it and dry stuff in here. Just makes you tired, makes me sick. So anyway, another, another first world problem. Even now, see it's dripping water on the ground. There's a carpet mat on the passenger side floor and there's a big carpet mat in the middle that's getting water on it. But what do you do? The uh, passenger side toolbox is full of ratchet straps and binders, so from in there they're gonna get wet or they're uh, dirty. Anyway, from being over loads, let us know in the comments. How do you stay dry on the road once you have to get out of the truck? It's sort of the same thing with cold weather gear. Uh, it's lucky at the moment, it hasn't been too cold. I think it's about four or five degrees when I go to work in the morning <coughs> currently. Um, so just jumper, jumper and pants is good enough in the beanie, but then you sit in the truck yeah, you can sit in blue singlet and shorts while you're driving, that's all fine, but then either having a decent coat to throw on oh, what are they? <laughs> having a decent coat to throw on and a set of pants, boots I get it if you're staying overnight you want that lighter gear to sleep in anyway so, what is it? 8.30 we're uh, loaded up and trucking. We're going to head down. Um, going to have to have a break somewhere on the way home. <coughs> Don't know if it'll be tar cutter. Might pull into a new spot at Gundagai and see if we can get a park there. I've mentioned with the uh, channel members, they know what I'm talking about there. The uh, 
new shop in Gundagai that look like they do salad rolls and a coffee. Just need to try them out. Anyway, we'll uh, cue the driving montage and we'll get going south on Highway 31. which is good the ground being so dry it um, a lot of that rain would have soaked in straight away but you don't want a lot of rain too quick otherwise it just runs off you don't get the full benefit out of it Joe's cafe is not open probably would have tried that this morning 
So I've had to do a drop there before and I've gone in and there's been a nice big looking sold roll sitting in the Cold Bay Marine there. But, um, yeah, as I said, as I said in previous videos, he only opens at 10 o'clock sometimes. You're making a killing in here. Everyone stops at the public toilets there because they're better than the ones at the airport. Gate bulging out of the tarp for some reason. I've got nothing back there. Mm. Bent gates. I've got to love them. I've got to love them. So. All right. I won't even risk putting my sunglasses on. Go across and get a um, get a coffee and see what I can order, and I'll be back with you in a sec. They see me coming, <laughs> see me pull up, so it's good when you can get a rapport with someone and they go, uh, have your coffee made. It doesn't help when you're trying to waste time for a uh, mandatory rest stop. I think I've still got five minutes. <clears throat> yeah, still got five minutes, so. Um, I don't know what brand of coffee they use, but it's quite nice. which is another hard hard reason to uh, find somewhere else to go to and I know a little while ago the service station sold I think changed hands and um, those from the subcontinent have got in there um, which is about when these stopped being made and on display too and today, go in there, and all of a sudden, all those same thing you see big, uh, big W, BP, all those pre made sandwiches in cardboard boxes that have probably been made six weeks ago um, are all in there, no fresh stuff whatsoever. So that's that's a shame, but while they got time to make a roll, I don't even know how I could do this. Chicken, chicken and salad. Nice big slice of beetroot in there. Tomato, onion, lettuce, grated cheese. Uh, grated cheese, grated carrot, and some uh, some cheese. So I put that back in there. Normally, once I leave here, I'll have my coffee first while it's warm enough to drink, and then have the uh, roll down down at Kyamba near the uh, Tumbarumba turnoff, where it's back to concrete, newish concrete road, and not the bumpy tar. A bit, bit easier to eat without uh, dropping stuff, dropping the insides of stuffing the uh, contents everywhere. <laughs> also, too, notice last night coming up in the rain, some big, big bangs on the windscreen, big bugs, and didn't exactly know what they were. Uh, the whole road, the whole service station gantry all along the front of the uh, the service station itself. There's just hundreds and hundreds of, what I'm guessing are juvenile, or nowhere near mature, bogong moths. I'm guessing it's that time of year. I remember back in primary school where you'd have that one time of year where they'd come out and fly, come out of the ground or whatever happens there in their lifespan. And um, massive, like moths that long, wingspan like your hand and I'll put a photo up here of um, how big they can get to but yeah hundreds of them over there I did pick one one up that was on the window that was alive and put it on my shirt to jump it to bring over the shows but it um it flew off coming across the road so yeah as I said throw a photo up 
showing you what a bogon moth looks like, but there's been some years where you just don't see them anymore. Which is why it's hard to um, to guess what that time of year is when they normally come out of the ground. She's a, um, a quite old mine. You might have seen when we we're coming down the main drag, there was a Hilux. You wouldn't have seen the Hilux, but a caravan went in to get fuel. Instead of, I oh know you're not supposed oh, you can go in and fuel up a four wheel drive under the truck entries, but there's no trucks here. He's come in and tried to use diesel one bowser under the main gantry and then decided he, he's on the wrong side so he's done a yui and then come back around through it he's just zigzagging through the gantry with this big dual axle caravan behind him not quite sure all the plots there because then he put the nozzle in the car <coughs> Waited two seconds and the pump didn't come on, so he's hung it up and gone back in and asked the staff if the pump's working. And they've time just to wait a little bit longer. And then as I'm coming out, I oh know you when you finish fueling up, you give the nozzle a bit of a tap just so you don't have any spillage. One, two taps, it's like after you pee, how many times do you shake it? One or two taps, one or two shakes, put it back in, off you go. Um, he would have tapped about 10, 15 times, just sit there, tap, 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 trying to get those last little drops of diesel into his Hilux. And there he goes now. We'll see where I catch him. The, um, the old twin cap Hilux is in too good a nick, so I don't think he'd be doing his 110. <clears throat> coffee, coffee, coffee. And that's us. <clears throat> and I'm still I'm still getting the phone coming up with GPS errors it's almost on a daily basis I don't know what's causing causing that I've got to keep on putting it because I've got to enter in where I am uh, manually I have to put a comment there because it's been entered manually and I'm pretty sure I went through all this last week last video But now, if I get pulled over by whoever and they look at it, it's going to come up with GPS error, GPS error, GPS error. But what, that's what I'm typing. It's not what the phone's saying. I've screen capped one of the errors just so I can show them that. But I don't want to, um... I don't want it to look like that I'm putting... Putting in somewhere falsely making a false statement technology it's where you never had that issue with a logbook anyway but that's us that's been five minutes of yabba jabba uh, once again thank you to the channel members for this um, you can join there's a join area there come over have a look at some of the uh the members only videos i want to do a lot more there i'm just trying to work out what exactly and uh yeah come and join the fun
uh, we're just coming up over Kyamba Range here, about to drop off aeroplane. I uh, wasn't going to turn the camera on until we got back, got back home, but I think uh, after that experience, I think I'm done with Tarkata. <laughs> No, didn't notice when I opened the salad wrap and showed to you, but it was on a, uh, a hamburger bun, which yeah, you're gonna have a hot patty and that sort of stuff in it. You want it to hold up, so you want the bread to be a bit, bit firm, a bit stale-ish. Um, yeah, bad, bad taste in the mouth. And if that's what. Uh, Make it a fresh one on the day is going to be. I'm going to have to find, going to have to find an alternative. I think. As I said in a previous video, I can have have food in my esky and have lunch and whatever, and not have to worry about stopping. But it positioned where it is is a good place to stop, have a coffee. <clears throat> You're an hour and a half from home. Um, have a coffee and get home, have me lunch and have something decent there more than just a sandwich because when I get home I don't eat much once I get home because I'm only sort of up for a few hours and into bed and don't want to go to bed after eating a big meal because that's going to lead to a problem the next morning when uh, you're halfway up the highway somewhere so yeah, you have to try something else. I know one of me channel members uh, has suggested that's just where that crash was too. Um, Holbrook Bakery. I ate at Holbrook Bakery all the time when we're doing the Holbrook Bypass. Um, even in the kegs, I used to stop. Since the bypass has gone in, though. Holbrook's been redeveloped. You used to be able to park anywhere on the main drag. <clears throat> That's not the case now. It's uh, like some of the bypass towns, they've made them not truck friendly. So they did split off the Holbrook Bakery when the uh, Ampole at the southern end of town was built. And I've been there a couple of times, which is good. But I'll show you, and I'll end up going there next week just to. Um, just to try, just to show you in there, but you've only got where the truck parking area is, is you got to go past the fuel gantries and you've only got two like two or three um, paths of through traffic between the pumps to get to the parking area and if that joint's busy uh, I've been there before and waited 15 minutes for another truck or someone to finish fuel and, and get back from inside just so you can get to the parking area uh, so, and also by then you're only 45 minutes, 40 minutes from home. So, stopping and having a coffee and a feed. By the time you stop and do that, you're pretty much nearly home. So, yeah. If that was a tar cutter, or even here at Aeroplane, little Billabong, um, even if that was on the side of the road at Gundagai. There is, there is the northbound shell at the Dog in the Tucker box there. Uh, Oliver's is there as well. I've never used, gone to Oliver's, so I don't know if they'd have salad rolls and stuff. You've got Subway, but that's incredibly expensive for what it is. Um, and plus, it's on the northbound side, so to go in there, you've got to cross over traffic to get in there. And then when you're coming back out, you've got to cross back across northbound traffic and... I've gone past and seen trucks lined up there waiting to get out and just cars coming over the hill at them under the uh, safety cam gantry there and you wonder how long people wait there to get back out on the road and also at the moment too they're doing a lot of uh, <clears throat> road work or road works they're fixing the entry and exit to the joint up as well which has always been bucket and give it six months they'll probably bug it again but they've been there long enough they've been there for a few months working on it yeah, don't know. Don't know. Gonna have to work something else here. 
because it's it's too easy to pull over at South Gundy. You got Maccas and you got Hungry Jacks there. I don't want to be doing that. You haven't really got much more of an option, but yeah, that might be that might be the end of Ampol Car Cutter, which is unfortunate because, as I said before, great coffee. Coffee's great. Squawky, squawky. Just want to be able to get a decent feed. And especially on Fridays where you're not going to bed early in the afternoon, you're staying up late and having tea at a normal time at night. So there's a pretty big span in the afternoon where you're not eating anything. Anyway, poor me. Poor me. Uh, get back to the yard and um, get this stuff off the trailer. Once again guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.